Hello, I'm Thomas McIntyre with Leland USA, and thanks for joining us. Today, I will show you how Leland has made the transition from analog to IP simple with the easy setup of our MVR touch system, along with our iMega Pro line of high definition IP cameras. Leland provides a complete solution consisting of cameras, recording devices, and software. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the products involved in a Leland MVR touch system. I will explain the setup of the hardware included, and I will review the simple configuration of the MVR and cameras. Let's get started by taking a look at the products that are involved. All right, so we've unboxed everything. I'm gonna go through and show you what will come with the uh, product when you actually purchase it and uh, the different components that are involved. So first we have our IP cameras. This camera here is our three megapixel IPR434. It's a three megapixel that does almost 200 feet of infrared, very long distance night vision that it provides. The camera comes in the box. You also have a cable management bracket. These brackets are nice because they protect all the cords during your install. You're not gonna have any exposed wiring. Um, makes it very easy to mount and install. It's also gonna come with the rubberized mount protection so that no water gets in through where the mount connects to the camera. And then it comes with all the tools you need to set it up. These other cameras we have here are also two megapixel. So we have our smaller two megapixel or 1080p um, IPR7424. This camera is one of my favorites. Um, very, very good image quality and uh, it's rated for outdoor use, but you can also use it indoors. Then we have our IPD2220. This camera is, is amazingly small. You can see how thin and small it is. Uh, it has a fixed lens, so it can provide a very wide angle, 3.6 millimeters, and it's PoE only. So this, all you're doing here is plugging a Cat5 or Cat6 cable from the camera into your PoE switch. And then lastly, we have our IPR320, which is our vandal-proof eyeball camera. It's also two megapixel. This camera will basically work in any environment. Very, very strong camera here. Next in the system, you have your PoE switch. Right here, we have a 16-port uh, PoE switch. Basically, this is what is transferring all the data from the cameras to the recorder. Each camera, you're gonna plug from the camera into a port on this switch. Then you're going to plug the uplink ports, which are gigabit uplinks. They're very fast, um, enable the, the system to not have any lag. One of them is gonna go into the NVR, and the other one is going to go into your, your router. Um, next, we have the NVR116. This is our, our big product. It basically is a standalone recorder that is doing 1080p in all 16 channels. You can see it has an easy to use front panel. However, a lot of times you're gonna be accessing it over the network. It also has a great user interface for managing. This NVR is gonna to connect to the PoE switch and that's what's going to manage your entire system. Finally, with the NVR, you're gonna get a mouse, a remote, a power supply, and then uh, any extra cables you might need if you wanted to add hard drives to this. Say you wanted to upgrade to Four more, extra, four more terabytes of data, you can go ahead and use these cables to add that there. Also comes with our free management software, no licenses involved. You can manage 50 of these uh, across the country if you'd like through this free software. So that about does it for uh, showing you what comes out of the box. This is a complete system you'll get from Leland. Next, we're gonna go into the setup, what you actually plug in once you've installed your camera, where you're gonna plug each wire, how you're gonna go from there. Now we are gonna go over actually setting up a system. So you have put your mount on the wall, you've placed all of your cameras where they need to go. You're going to have a Phillips head screwdriver to open cameras that do have outside housing. So in here, I just come in, two screws to open. Once I actually open, take out those screws, I can open the unit. And with that, I'm going to take my Cat6 cable that I ran to the installation site. I'm gonna feed it through the bracket up into the camera and plug it into the RJ45 connection here. So once I plug that in there, I am done on the camera side. That is mounted, it is ready to go. I've run the CAT6 back to, back to my head end location. So this is where the PoE switch is gonna be located. So the CAT6 is actually gonna come in and plug from this camera straight into port one. 
I'm gonna do that with the rest of my cameras throughout the site. Camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. Continue until you've set them all up. Once that's plugged in here, then you're going to move over to your NVR. So now I've got all of my cameras connected to my switch. Next move is actually coming to the back of the NVR, taking a Cat6 from the back here, plugging it in and running it to the uplink spot on the PoE switch. So once we plug that in here, the MVR is now connected to the system. I'm then going to take the power cable, plug it into the back end, plug that in, plug it into the wall. Uh, once you've connected that up, you're gonna connect your monitor. There are three cables for the monitor. The first one you're gonna connect is your HDMI cable. So you take the one end of the HDMI into the monitor, the other end into the back of the MVR. Next, you're gonna plug in USB from the monitor to the MVR. And what this does is it allows you to uh, use touchscreen controls for the MVR. Data has to communicate between the two devices. The USB handles that. And there's only a couple ports for USB on the back of the MVR. The one you're gonna plug it into is labeled AUX. Once you've got all that set up, your system is now completely connected and you start powering stuff up. So first we're gonna power on the PoE switch. There's a switch on the, the MVR, same thing. There's a power switch on the back. You're gonna flip that on and again, you're ready to go. Finally, you'll turn on the monitor. The mo this model monitor, the power is actually on the side. You hit the button on the side of it, it's turning it on. Uh, once that is up, you're going to see the opening screen for the MVR. The MVR takes about a minute to load, uh, maybe 30 seconds. So give it a little time, let it boot up. Once it comes up, we'll get into the settings menu and show you how to set up each camera. All right, so now that you've plugged everything in and powered everything up, it's time to configure the MVR touch. So right when you plug everything in and turn it on, you're gonna come up into the left-hand corner and click on the gear tab right there. That will pull up your main menu. This is what you use on the MVR Touch to navigate through um, all the different options. Go ahead and click on the setup menu. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have your time set correctly. It's very important for video surveillance in general is making sure that your system is recording on the proper time. So click on the system tab then click enter next to the date and time menu. Once you're in there, you wanna make sure that your time is synced properly. So down at the time sync option, click over until you get it to the NTP server. So this is gonna use network time. Then you're gonna come down and make sure you're in the correct time zone. So click on the down arrow and select your time zone from the drop down menu. Once you've done this, go ahead and click on the X in the top right hand corner to exit out. It may uh, have a warning saying this is gonna change your affected your data. Go ahead and click OK on that. That's no big deal. Once you've exited out of here, it may take a little bit to configure. It's gonna say that it's checking for changes. Uh, go ahead and wait, and then you're actually gonna, gonna go back into the setup menu. So now we're coming to the setup menu, and the next thing we wanna do is give the NVR an IP address. This is how the, the NVR will be found on the network and how the cameras will communicate with the NVR because it'll have its own unique IP address. So on the network, there are a couple options in IP mode. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is switch over to DHCP. What this does is it'll actually self-assign an IP address to the MVR using the, the modem or router that you've connected to the system. So now once I've selected DHCP, I'm gonna close out of this and let it configure. What it's doing now is it's actually pulling an IP address that's available from the network, making sure that you don't have any conflicting IP addresses um, on the network. Once you've done that, you're gonna go back into the setup menu and back into the network tab. Once you've gone back into the network menu, you'll now see a new IP address, subnet mask, and gateway for your MVR. This is a unique IP address that the MVR will have on your local network and will allow the cameras to talk to the MVR. Now that it's on DHCP and it's found an IP address, we wanna change it back to static. What that'll do is it'll lock in this IP address and it won't change, it'll keep it constant so you'll never have an issue with communications on the network. Once you've switched it back to static, you're done setting it up uh, for the IP address for the MVR itself, and you can go ahead and exit out again to save the settings. All right, so now that you've assigned the NVR an IP address, you need to assign each camera on the system its own unique IP address. To do this, go into the setup menu. Under the first tab, the camera tab, click on the WS Discovery feature. 
This feature basically searches the entire network for any Leland IP cameras attached to the system and will pull it up into this menu. A lot of the times you might miss a camera or two because it is just a snapshot of the network at any one moment. So go ahead and hit IP scan to make sure you get all of your cameras on the network. Once all of your cameras have showed up, you can see that each one may be defaulted to a different IP address. Uh, a lot of the times you're gonna see this as 192.168.0.200. For us, you know, we have a lot of cameras on the network, so it's already set up like this. There are two options for setting your IP addresses. If you don't know a lot about uh, your network, you're not an IT guy, Leland has made a great feature called Auto Set that will actually auto assign all of your camera's IP addresses for you. So for the uh, reasons for our, our instructions here, go ahead and click Auto Set and put in your password. Once you put in your password, which is defaulted to 1111, it's going to ask you, uh, the network settings of all IP cameras discovered will be changed. Do you want to continue? Hit OK and you're good to go. Once you've done the auto set, it'll take about 10 seconds to 30 seconds to load and you will see all of your cameras have their own unique IP address on the same range as your NVR. Once you've done this, to check and make sure that all your cameras are assigned how you want them, hit Get Snap. What this will do is this will pull an image from each camera and show you where the camera is. So now you can say, oh, okay, camera one is in the front, camera two is in the back, etc. It should auto assign all of the camera places for you as well, but if you want to change where that camera appears on the system, so you know, I want camera one to be this camera, and I want camera two to be this camera, change it how you want it or leave it how it was automatically done. Then you're gonna hit X to close out and you're good to go. That is the complete setup for the MVR Touch. Now, if you know what you're doing and you have a lot of IT experience or you have specific IP addresses that you need to assign uh, to each camera, there's a different method. For that method, click on the first camera and hit Set IP. Within this menu, you can give unique IP address, subnet mask, and gateway to each camera. You hit OK and it assigns that. That's the method that you're gonna use if you have specific static IP addresses that you wanna use or you're a more advanced user. Once you've set each IP address, you'll go ahead and again, assign the cameras to each individual channel, how you want them organized, and you are done. From there, you go ahead and X out, X out again, and your setup is complete. And that completes our setup of the MVR Touch uh, system. To recap, we went through and we plugged everything in. We plugged the cameras into the PoE switch. We plugged the PoE switch into the NVR, and we plugged the NVR into the touchscreen monitor. Um, once we completed that, we showed you how to set, a, uh, set an IP address for the NVR touch itself. We also assigned IP addresses to each camera using WS Discovery. I hope this shows how easy it is to set up a Leland NVR touch system. My name is Thomas McIntyre. See you next time.